The Origin of the Earth Over 4.5 billion years ago, a momentous event occurred when the Milky Way galaxy intersected with a neighboring dwarf galaxy, an encounter that significantly expedited the birth of stars. Our solar system finds its place within the vast expanse of the Milky Way galaxy. Within the confines of our solar system, there existed a dynamic cycle of material movement. In this intricate cosmic ballet, the outer region saw the evaporation of its water component, contributing to the formation of essential materials. As a result, particles were systematically dispersed according to their water content. The previously prevalent bipolar flow came to a halt, marking the end of material circulation. In the vicinity of the Sun, specific regions emerged with notably high particle densities. Within these particle-rich domains, collisions became a common occurrence, propelling the gradual growth of minuscule particles into planetesimals. These planetesimals, in turn, continued their relentless collisions with smaller particles and fellow planetesimals, eventually evolving into the grand celestial bodies we recognize as planets, including Earth. 2. Initiation of Plate Tectonics in the early stages of Earth's history, our planet existed as a desolate and arid sphere, devoid of both atmosphere and ocean. During this epoch, a relentless barrage of planetesimals and icy planets bombarded Earth, sculpting its surface. Over a span of 200 million years, a gradual transformation was underway as an ocean atmosphere system slowly took shape. This transition relied on the infusion of vital elements such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, harnessed from the very planetesimals that bombarded the Earth. Yet, even as this transformation unfolded, the nascent ocean remained a perilous environment, characterized by its toxicity, high salinity, and an excess of heavy metals rendered it inhospitable to life discouraging the emergence of any organisms. Throughout this tumultuous era, colossal asteroids, each exceeding on 000 kilometers in diameter, collided with Earth, causing instant transformation. These cataclysmic impacts led to the conversion of both the Earth's crust and the asteroids into searing plasma, blanketing the surface in molten magma. Within the craters formed by these colossal impacts, basaltic central cones rose, triggering upflows in the mantle. As the molten magma gradually cooled and solidified, a thinner, basaltic crust akin to oceanic crust emerged. The nascent ocean began to take form as surface water collected within the colossal craters, coalescing into small puddles that would eventually merge to shape a vast ocean. Concurrently, the rising mantle exerted pressure on the nascent oceanic crust, resulting in the formation of oceanic ridges. The dynamic interactions between tectonic plates, driven by mantle convection, gave rise to the phenomenon known as plate tectonics. As Earth's geological evolution continued, the oceanic plate began its descent beneath the lighter continental plate in a process called subduction. Weathered sediments from the Earth's surface played a crucial role in neutralizing the once ultra-acidic ocean. Additionally, heavy metals precipitated and settled out, accumulating as deposits along mid-oceanic ridges. These deposits were gradually transported into the deep mantle through the mechanism of plate tectonics, ultimately facilitating the transformation of the ocean into a hospitable environment. Approximately four, Two billion years ago, a significant milestone was reached as a liquid core formed within the Earth's interior. Convection within this liquid core generated a robust magnetic field that enveloped the Earth, shielding its surface from the harsh onslaught of solar winds and cosmic rays. As this protective geomagnetic field took shape, Earth's surface conditions became increasingly conducive to the emergence of life. Three. The Birth of Proto-Life In the early stages of Earth's history, a time when the atmosphere acted as a barrier, blocking sunlight from reaching the surface, the conditions for the emergence of primitive life were being set underground, within the confines of a geyser's cave. 
The presence of uranium ore within this subterranean realm emitted substantial amounts of radiation, engendering a diverse array of materials and ultimately giving rise to the foundational components of early life. Under the Earth's surface, water underwent a cycle of boiling and ascent, with surface water subsequently trickling back into the natural nuclear reactor. Remarkably, the geyser water maintained a temperature below 100 degrees, safeguarding the nascent biomolecules. Below the surface, the environment was reductive, in stark contrast to the oxidizing conditions above ground. These specific conditions proved to be indispensable for the synthesis of biomolecules. In this concealed realm, tidal forces exerted a much more pronounced influence than they do in the present day. Even bodies of water, including lakes, experienced significant ebb and flow, giving rise to recurring wet and dry cycles. These cycles played a pivotal role in the formation of life's foundational building blocks. Fatty acids joined forces, encapsulating the proto-life molecules within protective shells. Polymerization advanced in response to the wet and dry cycles. Gradually, protein-like materials capable of acting as catalysts were synthesized. These molecules oscillated between the geyser cave and the surface environment, fostering interactions that led to the development of more intricate biomolecules. Proto-RNA combined with enzyme-like foundational materials, evolving into ribosomes, which possessed the ability to self-replicate. This laid the foundation for life's capacity to reproduce. Ultimately, these molecules found themselves enclosed within lipid membranes, culminating in the emergence of primitive protocellular life. 4. The Initial Stage of Life The intricate dance of Earth's plate tectonics initiated with the formation of its oceans, eventually led to the obliteration of its original continent, submerging it deep within the Earth's mantle. Approximately four billion years ago, the primordial supercontinent vanished, leaving life teetering on the fringes of a fragmented landmass. Deep within the Earth, a momentous transformation was poised to unfold. The subducted remnants of the ancient supercontinent descended toward the core mantle boundary, their abundant radioactive elements triggering the melting of the uppermost core. By four, two billion years ago, this transformation yielded a newly forged liquid outer core, which contributed to the fortification of Earth's magnetic field. This magnetic shield became a vital protector, safeguarding the surface environment against the perils of solar winds and cosmic rays, ultimately allowing life to flourish on the planet's surface. For life to persist, the continuous circulation of materials, along with a steady supply of energy and nutrients, was paramount. The essential life-sustaining mechanism revolved around a ceaseless flow of electrons. The earliest proto-life struggled to thrive far from the nuclear geysers due to energy constraints. Yet, through mutations, life began to adapt and evolve yielding more resilient life forms capable of surviving in hostile environments. This second stage of proto-life embarked on a journey to harness the available sunlight on the Earth's surface. These life forms evolved metabolic processes that converted light energy into electrochemical energy. Additionally, they employed sugars as energy stores, allowing them to endure the sunless night hours. With this shift, the primary source of energy for life on Earth transitioned from nuclear geysers to the sun. Around 4.1 billion years ago, the ocean remained exceptionally toxic, claiming the lives of a multitude of proto-life forms. Nevertheless, a fraction of these resilient proto-life forms managed to survive amidst the extreme conditions. They developed protective mechanisms to fend off the intrusion of metallic ions from the ocean water into their protocells. This primitive life began to coalesce into more substantial and intricate structures. In the unfolding drama of evolution, modern life forms currently utilize a limited set of 20 amino acids. Hence, it is the ancestors employing these same amino acids that persevered through the crucible of mass extinction. Evolution ever teetering between continuity and cessation, 
saw the emergence of unstable RNA that gradually transformed into the more durable DNA, enabling reliable information transmission across generations. This marked the genesis of the third stage of proto-life, giving birth to prokaryotic organisms. 5. Second Stage of Evolution of Life Oxygen, in its unbound state, can prove detrimental to life due to its capacity to disrupt the delicate balance of reductive life processes. Thus, in the early stages of life on Earth, the initial photosynthetic organisms likely comprised anaerobic microbes that did not produce oxygen as a byproduct. However, life exhibited its remarkable adaptability, eventually harnessing oxygen as a valuable and additional source of energy, leading to the emergence of cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria played a pivotal role in oxygen production, with the oxygen crystallizing into iron-bearing oxide minerals effectively reducing the iron content in the oceans. Despite these transformations, the ancient oceans remained considerably more saline, roughly five times saltier than their present state. As Earth's interior cooled, aged sections of the primordial crust resting in the upper mantle descended into the lower mantle. A neighboring dwarf galaxy gave birth to a multitude of radiant stars within a relatively brief span of a few thousand years. Some of these stars culminated in dramatic supernova explosions, and the resultant cosmic rays emanating from these celestial events exerted a profound influence on the Sun's heliosphere and bombarded Earth. These cosmic rays played a crucial role in generating cloud condensation nuclei, subsequently leading to the proliferation of clouds until Earth was entirely shrouded in their cover. This thick veil of clouds obstructed sunlight from reaching the planet's surface, precipitating a global glaciation event, famously known as the Snowball Earth, and resulting in another global mass extinction. Nonetheless, as history had shown, some tenacious life forms persisted through this challenging period. Under the ice sheet, diminutive life forms found refuge shielded by Earth's intricate and expansive circulation systems. In this grand scheme, Earth itself is intricately connected to the solar system and the vast universe, emphasizing life's place within a colossal system. Prokaryotes, survivors of the snowball Earth, continued their evolutionary journey, giving rise to more intricate life forms, including endosymbiotic systems dwelling together within cells. This led to the formation of mitochondria and chloroplasts, permitting the extraction of greater energy from oxygen. A single prokaryotic entity could house thousands of mitochondria. The development of a nuclear membrane shielded DNA from the oxygen-rich ocean water, enabling DNA strands to grow longer and preserve an expanding store of genetic information. Life, therefore, progressed into more diverse and complex organisms, Finally, the era of eukaryotes dawned, with these organisms growing to proportions thousands of times larger than their prokaryotic predecessors. While universal entropy suggests an inexorable drift towards disorder, life's trajectory remains characterized by order and increasing complexity. Life appears to persistently evolve, seemingly undeterred by the overarching force of entropy. Six. The dawn of the Cambrian explosion. The dynamic interplay of plate tectonics orchestrated the gradual assembly of fledgling continents into a colossal supercontinent known as Nuna. As Nuna took shape, its expanding landmasses ushered in an era of opportunity for cyanobacteria, which found a burgeoning habitat in the form of lakes, rivers, wetlands, and estuaries. Within these environments, Cyanobacteria embarked on photosynthesis, generating free oxygen. However, during this epoch, the majority of the oxygen produced was swiftly consumed in the decomposition of deceased cyanobacteria. Consequently, only a minuscule quantity of free oxygen managed to amass in the atmosphere. On land, a different narrative unfolded. Deceased cyanobacteria became interred beneath layers of sediment, allowing the oxygen that might have otherwise broken down their remains to instead accumulate in the atmosphere. 
the presence of this expansive landmass served as a catalyst for augmenting the oxygen content within the atmosphere. The greater the total land area on Earth's surface, the more pronounced the surge in atmospheric oxygen levels. As time progressed, the Numa supercontinent underwent fragmentation, only to be reassembled once more by the relentless forces of plate tectonics, resulting in the formation of a supercontinent named Rodinia. In the equatorial regions, the subduction of oceanic plates beneath continental plates led to the gradual accumulation of these slabs within the mantle transition zone. Eventually, these slabs descended into the Earth's core, imparting a cooling effect on the outer core. This transformation affected the flow of electricity within the core, resulting in a shift from a dipole magnetic field to a weaker quadrupole magnetic field. Meanwhile, on a cosmic scale, the Milky Way galaxy collided with a dwarf galaxy, ushering in a phase of intense star formation known as a starburst. Over time, the newly formed stars culminated in spectacular supernova explosions that showered the Earth with cosmic rays. The planet, marked by its weakened quadrupole magnetic field, faced substantial upheaval. Thick clouds blanketed the Earth, while its surface became encased in ice. These tumultuous conditions oscillated between extended periods of extreme heat and shorter intervals of extreme cold, during which the atmospheric oxygen levels plummeted to those reminiscent of the Archean Eon, triggering mass extinctions. Paradoxically, these mass extinctions offered life the opportunity to evolve into entirely new forms. The cyclical influxes of cosmic rays and profound fluctuations in oxygen levels precipitated genetic mutations that accelerated the emergence of novel species. As the starburst era waned, Earth's core transitioned back to a more robust dipole magnetic field, while ongoing photosynthesis gradually restored atmospheric oxygen levels to their former state. Simultaneously, the inner regions of the Earth underwent a gradual cooling process. When the temperature of the Earth's interior reached a critical point, the water components trapped in minerals within oceanic plates were released to the surface environment, with sea levels remaining largely unaffected. However, as the mantle temperature dipped below 650 degrees Celsius, these mineral-bound water components were carried into the upper mantle. On the Earth's surface, the depletion of water components initiated a gradual decrease in sea levels, a phenomenon known as the leaking Earth. This natural progression is inexorable on a cooling planet, and this phenomenon facilitated the movement of 3% of all seawater into the deeper mantle, leading to a 600-meter drop in sea levels. Consequently, surface land areas expanded, along with the continental shelf regions exposed to sunlight, nurturing the creation of a habitat for future life on Earth. Rivers transported nutrients from the inland regions down to the continental shelves, significantly accelerating the accumulation of oxygen in the atmosphere. These intricate processes established the backdrop for a spectacular explosion in the evolution of life forms. 7. The Cambrian Explosion the relentless march of extreme climatic fluctuations persisted, steering life along a path of ever-evolving survival strategies. During this tumultuous journey, life underwent transformations of monumental significance. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes found themselves living in a delicate symbiotic harmony, compensating for each other's limitations and flourishing as an integrated whole. This union expanded the realm of possibilities for life, propelling the development of organisms that grew to sizes a million times greater than eukaryotes and a trillion times larger than prokaryotes. The advent of multicellular life marked a pivotal milestone in evolution, ushering in a period of unparalleled potential. However, a new glaciation period descended, casting a shadow over life's progress and culminating in a mass extinction event. Yet, with the passage of time, the grip of the Ice Age loosened, and the global climate began its gradual warming. Throughout this shifting tapestry of Earth's history, vital materials such as phosphorus, essential for life, 
cycled through the climate system, accumulating in the oceans. It was during the Ediacaran period that a fascinating array of animals emerged, with iconic representatives like Dickinsonia and Sprigina taking center stage. Some of these life forms reached lengths exceeding one meter, and they were distinguished by their soft bodies. Devoid of shells or skeletons, their preferred habitat was the warm, shallow marine environment in the vicinity of the Rodinia supercontinent. The infusion of nutrients from the land increased steadily, as did the atmospheric oxygen levels. The ocean saw a rise in ferrous iron content, which subsequently oxidized to form substantial iron deposits. Simultaneously, phosphorus and calcium levels in the ocean experienced a notable upswing. Life responded by evolving to harness these elements, giving rise to animals adorned with bones and shells. Calcium played a crucial role in shielding microdiscs from potential threats, and their bodies utilized calcium to create a protective layer of robust scales. Life displayed a remarkable capacity to adapt, skillfully exploiting the elements within its environment, and the Earth's ever-changing conditions shaped the contours of life itself. The Earth transitioned into yet another era of climatic upheaval, oscillating between prolonged episodes of scorching heat and biting cold spanning tens of millions of years. These dramatic fluctuations spelled the end for the Ediacaran fauna, but they also heralded the emergence of new species. Radiation emanating from the Earth's interior played a substantial role in the ongoing evolution of life. Continental rifts where continents fractured, exposing erupting magma and radioactive elements, played a pivotal role in this process. Radiation hastened the genesis of fresh species and new branches in the tree of life, a phenomenon known as stem evolution. Life followed unique paths on each of the small continents, and when these landmasses later reconverge, their distinct life forms intermingled, giving rise to novel forms of life. This crossbreeding phenomenon, known as crown evolution, led to an abundance of variations and the emergence of diverse life forms. Continental collisions led to the formation of an even more varied array of surface environments. Bays and gulfs on large continents became hubs well supplied with nutrients from upstream, nurturing the evolution of life to a greater degree. In the Cambrian era, life forms diversified at an unprecedented pace an event often referred to as the Cambrian Explosion. This explosive phase resulted in the creation of some 35 new phyla, which would serve as the foundation for the wide array of plants and animals that populate the world today. 8. The Paleozoic Era The primordial ocean of Earth in a bygone era was more than five times as saline as the current ocean. A significant transformation unfolded some 600 million years ago when the ocean began to shed its salinity. The process of desalination involved the transference of salt from seawater onto the land, manifesting as rock salt deposits. This shift resulted in a reduction in sea levels, enabling the relocation of salt from the ocean's grasp to terrestrial realms. Even if seawater were to surge again to reclaim the rock salt, a substantial portion of it would have become concealed within sediments, rendering it inaccessible. This decrease in seawater salinity paved the way for a more hospitable aquatic environment, embracing diverse life forms with open arms. Estuaries and open seas blossomed with new life, particularly as atmospheric oxygen levels continued to rise. An ozone layer took shape in the Earth's upper atmosphere, serving as a guardian against the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. The land surface became increasingly conducive to habitation, and it was the resilient alga that spearheaded the transition from water to the challenging land environment. This transition helps explain why alga preceded animals in the evolutionary timeline. Subsequently, with the emergence of insects during the Cambrian explosion, a co-evolutionary partnership with plants took root fish, marking the inception of vertebrates with backbones, came onto the scene as the first representatives of their kind. These fish represent the earliest vertebrate ancestors of modern humans. Over time, 
as fish continued to evolve. Tetrapods emerge, eventually giving rise to amphibians. The proliferation of plants initiated the release of free oxygen into the atmosphere through photosynthesis, enriching the air with oxygen levels exceeding those of today by one. Five times. These plants would later, in the form of sedimentary coal, play a pivotal role in fueling the transformative strides of human civilization, commencing with the Industrial Revolution. Next in the continuum of life's unfolding narrative were vertebrates equipped with lungs, making their way onto terrestrial habitats. The intricate tapestry of life burgeoned and diversified, branching out from fish to amphibians, then reptiles, followed by the majestic era of dinosaurs, and ultimately, mammals. This trajectory culminated in the emergence of humanity, a chapter yet to be discovered by the character in this story. Beyond the terrestrial realm, the solar system encountered the enigmatic dark nebula. As the solar system traversed this cosmic mist, Earth found itself bombarded by cosmic rays. Subsequently, the planet entered another ice age, beginning with the impact on plant life, which led to a significant reduction in atmospheric oxygen supply. The surface environment regressed to an anaerobic state, resembling the conditions of the Archean period. The scarcity of oxygen resulted in the deaths of numerous species of amphibians, reptiles, and insects. Yet life persisted in its relentless march of evolution, facing yet another formidable challenge. Unperturbed by the transformations transpiring on Earth's surface, anaerobic microorganisms had thrived in oxygen-deprived subterranean environments. The newfound oxygen-poor surface setting offered them an opportunity to resurface both on land and in oceans. As oxygen levels gradually rebounded, these microorganisms evolved to adapt to their evolved surroundings, setting the stage for the next phase of evolutionary development. The emergence of novel creatures on the brink of evolution, eventually leading to the ascent of humanity, lay tantalizingly close on the horizon. 9. From the Mesozoic to the birth of human beings. On the vast supercontinent of Panja, a tale of evolution unfolded as mammals and reptiles made their entrance, navigating the warm embrace of their environment, while reptiles embarked on a journey of diversification Branching into a multitude of forms, mammals chose a more discreet path, remaining concealed in the shadows and taking on the guise of nocturnal, rat-sized creatures. The emergence of dinosaurs marked a golden era for reptiles, as they triumphed over various other species in the relentless struggle for survival, securing their supremacy. In the geological symphony of continental shifts, the fragmentation of landmasses was accompanied by the generation of high-radiation magma. It was within these molten crucibles that stem evolution unfolded, driven by the hand of induced mutation. Dinosaurs rose to a dominant position within their ecosystems, their reign unchallenged. The scattered fragments of northern Panja, once separated, converged once more, ushering in an age of crown evolution. This union of continents engendered a fusion of life forms as new species radiated outward, embarking on journeys to distant lands. Dinosaurs thrived, populating ecosystems worldwide. In the botanical realm, advanced angiosperms, characterized by their sophisticated reproductive strategies, made their debut. These flowering plants harnessed animals for pollination, prospering in the process while the habitat of gymnosperms dwindled. At the rift of the Gondwana supercontinent, primates, the precursors of humans, emerged through the process of stem evolution. Meanwhile, among rodents, such as rats, new species found their place in the ever-evolving mosaic of life. Over time, the Gondwana supercontinent fractured, leading to the isolation of South America and Africa. In these separated domains, primates evolved into new world monkeys on the former and old world monkeys on the latter. Furthermore, the Indian subcontinent, parting ways with Antarctica, fostered the evolution of lorises among its primates. 
Across distinct continents, primates evolved independently, spawning a diverse array of species within this order. A colossal Pacific superplume surge, elevating the Pacific plate and sea levels. Lowlands succumbed to the rising waters, and the overall land area shrank. Ascendant sea levels partitioned the continents, providing discrete niches for the intricacies of individualized morphological evolution. On a cosmic scale, a momentous event transformed the Earth's surface environment. The solar system encountered a dark nebula, blanketing Earth entirely in clouds. Global cooling ensued, causing disruptions in ecosystems. Ultimately, a colossal meteorite, measuring 10 kilometers in diameter, descended upon the Yucatan Peninsula, serving as the cataclysmic catalyst for the mass extinction of dinosaurs. This event underscored the profound interconnection between Earth's destiny and cosmic occurrences. The influence of universe-scale events, capable of inducing global cooling and mass extinctions, extended to the galactic cosmic rays, which directly inscribed mutations into the DNA, bearing the intricate blueprints of life. These mutations, in turn, propelled the inexorable march of evolution, shaping every facet of life on Earth. And thus, the magnificent dinosaurs, who had once reigned supreme, met their final curtain call. 10. The Humanozoic Era The Appearance of Human Beings and Civilization Through the expanse of the African Rift Valley, a landscape marked by ongoing explosive volcanic activity and peculiar magma enriched with copious radioactive elements surged forth. It was amidst this tumultuous geological backdrop that a novel clade of primates, known as the Old World Monkeys, made their appearance, their roots intertwined with the distant origins of our own lineage. As we look back over the vast expanse of Earth's history, spanning approximately four, five billion years. It is evident that the terrestrial environments have undergone a series of substantial fluctuations, an enduring cycle of life and death. At long last, human beings emerged on the stage of Earth's chronicles, ushering in the era known as the Humanozoic. Humans possess a distinctive set of genetic regions, termed Human Accelerated Regions, or HARs, setting them apart from the rest of the animal kingdom. These regions contributed to the development of enlarged brains, endowing humans with the capacity for language, thought, consciousness, memory, and imagination. The expansion of human brain volume unfolded in three distinct stages, intriguingly coinciding with significant volcanic eruptions. This synchrony suggests that the surge in brain volume is attributed to stem evolution catalyzed by the outpouring of high output magma. Around one, two million years ago, the earliest human migrations began, extending beyond the borders of the African continent. The most recent common female ancestor to venture out of Africa, approximately 200, 000 years ago, is referred to as mitochondrial Eve. Her descendants voyaged to North America and Central America some 15,000 years ago, eventually reaching the southern extremity of South America a decade later. Humanity's diverse branches spread across the globe. Since those pivotal moments, a monumental progression of human civilization has unfolded. Innovations in agriculture and livestock cultivation revolutionized food production, providing the means for stable sustenance. Populations burgeoned, fostering the emergence of various occupational specializations and the adoption of barter and trade practices to facilitate efficient exchange. Settlements evolved into cities, and with time, small cities matured into city-states boasting currencies, economies, legal systems, courts, and law enforcement. Subsequently, the world witnessed the rise of the four great civilizations, flourishing along major rivers renowned for their heightened agricultural productivity. Territorial disputes and conflicts between these civilizations gave rise to the spread of religions as a substitute for rule by hereditary royal families. Over time, 
The concept of elected national leaders came to the fore, culminating in the emergence of modern democratic nations. As a social construct, democracy enshrined principles of freedom, equality, and fundamental human rights. The Industrial Revolution, catalyzed by the publication of Isaac Newton's Principia, commenced in Great Britain, unveiling a new era of scientific knowledge applied to the invention of transformative technologies. Breakthroughs such as the steam locomotive revolutionized transportation, while the advent of automobiles and airplanes made long-distance travel accessible. Human society entered a previously unseen age of abundance, yet it remained entangled in a cycle of ceaseless conflict, occasionally bearing the brunt of irreversible tragedies arising from the misapplication of scientific knowledge. The information revolution dawned with the advent of computers, providing the means for humanity to explore the cosmos, as epitomized by the Apollo program. The invention of the internet ushered in a new era of instantaneous global connectivity. In response to the remorse engendered by past conflicts, the vision of a united global nation is gradually taking shape. The European Union, founded in 1993, marked the formation of a unified state in Europe, historically mirrored by frequent wars. Similar federations have materialized in other regions, drawing humanity closer to the prospect of a united world nation. In the vast scope of Earth's history, the Humanozoic era occupies a remarkably brief chapter. Nevertheless, it encapsulates the entirety of human history within the overarching narrative of Earth's journey. Biologically, humans are but one among countless animal species, yet our unique cognitive evolution sets us apart from the rest. As we ponder what lies ahead for humanity, the future remains an open canvas, waiting for the next brushstroke in the tapestry of our shared human story. 11. Future of the Earth Human activities have long relied on the utilization of fossil fuels, a resource that has quietly amassed over billions of years in Earth's geological history. However, our current consumption of these fuels has accelerated at an unprecedented rate, and the reserves of fossil fuels are expected to dwindle significantly after the year 2020. Initially, it was foreseen that fossil fuels might become scarce by the year 2100. Yet, thanks to the shale gas revolution, this depletion timeline has been extended by a century. Simultaneously, advances in medical technology and improved nutrition have spurred a population explosion. As a consequence, critical food shortages are anticipated around 2020 marking the advent of an era characterized by three billion refugees. Nonetheless, the global population is projected to decline, eventually stabilizing at five billion by 2100, after peaking at 10 billion in 2050. Until 2050, the ongoing population growth will continue to exert immense pressure on the environment, contributing to widespread environmental contamination. These burgeoning challenges will magnify the anxieties prevalent in human societies. In the realm of science, groundbreaking technologies will be developed at an accelerated pace. Humanity's foray into space will include the establishment of lunar bases in preparation for the exploration of our solar system's celestial bodies. Artificially intelligent robots will play pivotal roles in space exploration, supporting and complementing human endeavors. In the not-so-distant future, the emergence of self-replicating robots will push the boundaries of human capability, ultimately extending these artificial life forms beyond our solar system into the vast galaxy. Furthermore, breakthroughs in technology will grant us access to different dimensions, enabling humans to perceive realms beyond the confines of space and time. Ultimately, the role of humanity itself will evolve and transform. This signifies the conclusion of the Humanozoic era, potentially an inevitable outcome dictated by the strategies of life's evolution. In the future, Earth will confront upheavals of unprecedented magnitude, with all continents converging to form the supercontinent Amasia, centered around Asia. Plants, through the process of carbon fixation, 
have historically sequestered atmospheric CO2 by incorporating carbon into their structures. Deceased plants, preserved within sediment, have played a crucial role in reducing atmospheric CO2 levels. The advent of the supercontinent Amasia is poised to expand the land area available for carbon fixation, as more extensive plant life will facilitate further reductions in atmospheric CO2. This is projected to lead to a reduction to just one-tenth of current CO2 levels. However, the rise of Amasia will bring about the extinction of C4 plants, which require elevated CO2 concentrations. Consequently, other animal species reliant on C4 plants for sustenance will also be impacted. Over the course of the last 600 million years, the quantity of seawater on Earth has gradually diminished as it has been subsumed into the mantle in the form of hydrated minerals. Ultimately, mid-oceanic ridges will elevate above the seawater, precluding the ingress of water into the crust as a lubricant and culminating in the cessation of plate tectonics. This heralds the inexorable fate of a cooling planet. The cessation of volcanic activity along subduction zones will precipitate the termination of mountain building processes, and the Earth will undergo significant environmental changes due to erosion. Subducted cold plates will cease their descent into the deep mantle. The outer core will no longer cool down, leading to the extinction of the geomagnetic field. The Earth's atmosphere will be stripped away by the solar wind, at this juncture, large multicellular organisms inhabiting the surface environment will face extinction. As the ocean recedes, the survival of marine life is also imperiled. Ultimately, all life on Earth will cease to exist. The escalating temperature of the solar surface will elevate Earth's surface temperature to 500 degrees Celsius, rendering our planet Venus-like. The collision between the Andromeda Galaxy and our Milky Way Galaxy will elevate the star birth rate, leading to an abundance of supernova explosions that intensify galactic cosmic radiation. The expanding Sun will engulf the Earth. This day marks the vanishing of our planet, which has nurtured and sustained life. By then, Earth's life will have embarked on a journey beyond our galaxy manifesting as self-replicating artificial life in an entirely new form, exploring the cosmos and seeking new frontiers.